This Cage Radio presentation is brought to you by Lucas Dyer at Fit Nutrition. He's a licensed and certified sports nutritionist. He works with both pro and amateur MMA fighters as well as jiu-jitsu practitioners. Would he really be the nutritional writer for jiu-jitsu magazine and collateral damage MMA if he didn't know what he was doing? I don't think so. So give him a call today at 857-265-8655. And don't forget, tell him Mott sent you. All right, what's up, everybody? It's Mott's Cage Radio with one of the top-level Takshitsu black belts I have ever met in my entire life. This guy could talk shit to himself and entertain more people than he can. Mike Christensen, welcome to the show, my man. How the hell are you? Dude, I'm good. How about yourself, bro? I am damn good. I am fired the fuck up to talk to you because, uh, I mean, you are a guy that will say anything. Doesn't matter who it pisses off. It's my favorite thing in the entire world. There is no filter, and uh, that is why we connect, my man. So, let's start with, with the soft shit. Let's figure out why we're mad at Charlie Houston and, and that, and then we'll get up to... Uh, what I really want to talk about, and oh, that's yeah. a, a mutual, really super close friend that we both enjoy, our man Hit Boy. But let's start with uh, with the Charlie Houston. You right. two cats like started a thread on Facebook. I think my eyes still fucking hurt from reading that shit. But it yeah. went back and forth. Why do you hate one another? Uh, dude. To be to be honest, I have no idea. Uh, I, I I had to be taught. It probably all started back. Uh, with the Garrett Duggar thing and Charlie Houston uh, was schlobbing his knob a little bit. And so he started, you know, he, he started disliking me, which is fine. And he wanted, he wanted this fight for days at 155, 150. I wanted it at 145. So it went back and forth, back and forth. Nobody ever uh, accepted the fight or took the fight. <laughs> and then I think the thread that you're talking about, dude, just uh, kicked off again. I got tired of it. I was like, all right, let's do it. He's like, yeah, you know, I'll take the fight at 45. I'll take it at whatever. I was like, all right, let's do it. So I called up uh, Dave Hirschbein and uh, Brandon with West Coast. They said they'd do it. Of course, they come back, say it's at 150. I don't have a problem with it. I said I'd take it. Charlie, you know, Charlie thought I wasn't going to take it. That's why he did it at 150. Uh, after I've taken the fight, you can see he hasn't said anything. He's been, he's been MIA for days. Uh, and to be honest, uh, media days this Saturday, I think it is, but you know, after media, I don't. I don't think this fight's gonna happen. Uh, Char- a couple people have been saying. Uh, Brandon's heard. Other people have heard. Dave's heard that Charlie's trying to find a way out of this fight. So, you know, who knows? If he shows up, he shows up. But uh, personally, I don't think the fight's gonna happen. So, I've been waiting to sell tickets. So, I'm gonna start selling tickets in a, in about two weeks. But uh, I want the fight to happen, and then after that, uh, I'm cutting down to 35. So. Oh, wow. So uh, you're going all the way down to 35s and whatnot. Um, Saturday, like you said, the media day is coming up and whatnot. Um, I mean, I guess you could start selling tickets and everybody wants to see that fight. But I know Brandon has the ability to go get you another opponent. But um, when you cut down to 35s, where are you looking to fight? Is it going to be at West Coast? Do you have something else lined up already? Uh, you know, I don't have anything lined up. Um I would like to fight just the way the schedule and everything falls in place. Uh, I heard GKO is supposed to be throwing another show. I fought at one of their last shows um, up there at Jackson uh, Rancheria. So I'd like to fight. They're, they're supposed to have a show in January. I don't know if they are. If they're having a show in January, I'm trying to fight at 135 there. And then I'm just trying to you know schedule it right and do everything right and uh, you know, string together some wins at 35. It's going to be a hard cut, but then realistically – Everyone that weighs about as much as I do cuts to 35s anyway, so. Okay, so um, I'm definitely looking forward to this fight. I hope it does happen. I will definitely be there if it does. Uh, I'll probably be there if it doesn't. Sure. But um, Andre Feely just signed with the UFC, so that fight with Max Griffin is completely off. Uh, they've actually brought in Scott Smith to face Max Griffin, so they, they've done some shuffling on the card and whatnot. So hopefully, the the other reason I wanted to come is to obviously see that fight with you and Charlie. Yeah. Uh, how do you predict that that fight going? Are you knocking him out? Are you choking him out? Is this thing going uh, distance? 
Let, let, let's be honest. Uh, what's going to happen is the exact same thing that happened when he just fought Mario Soto. I mean, I think Mario Soto went in there and maybe threw one jab, took Charlie down right away. I, I've watched a couple of Charlie's fights. I almost fell asleep. But uh, every time, the only exciting thing that he ever does is he gives up his back every time he's taken down. And that's not an exaggeration. He gives up his back and he tries to get back up. Well, Mario Soto took him down with a quick outside leg single, uh, took his back really quick, let Charlie back up. I mean, that's what it looked to me. He let him back up, took him back down again, and uh, choked him out in the first round. So that's what's going to happen. I'm going to try to take it to the second round. I want to take. I'm going to take him down right away. It's not. It's not a question. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to take him down right away. Um, you know, I want to beat him up for one round, and then you know, I want to submit him in the second round, and that's what's going to happen. Uh, I mean, and the, the the best part about it is I'm not joking when I get I get random messages from people that he used to train with or still trains with or or whatever. And they're just like, man, this guy's terrible. Uh, we can't stand him. Nobody fucking likes him. Uh, I don't even think he's training with Carnage. He might be training with them every once in a while now. But I think he went down to train with Gary Shirley. Uh, I, Gary Shirley thinks he sucks. I mean, I, I don't even know. I mean, it's gonna be you know, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun at media day and after the fight. Yeah, I guess I'll get a win. Uh, it's kind of annoying because, like I said, I wanted to go to thirty fives, <clears throat> but you know, I mean, whatever. All right, now uh, tell me what the hell is going on with Hit Boy because this guy uh, he tries to stand under the radar and now he's hiding behind Jesus like he's some change yeah. person and whatnot. I think he's the biggest piece of shit I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Every time something goes wrong, instead of him handling it like a fucking man, uh, he's got to go call everybody that he yeah. knows to uh, to fucking help him out. So take me through exactly uh, what bitch move he's recently pulled and uh, what the fuck we're doing about it. All right, so here it goes. Um, I guess it all started somehow, somehow, and I don't know because I definitely didn't add this loser on my Facebook uh, somehow I had his, his terrible, uh, fight face, fight game, fight. I don't know what he has, but some terrible, uh, uh fight gear. And I had, I had him on my page, right? And he, <laughs> I was bored one day and he posted a ridiculous status <clears throat> about something. I forget what it was, but I just quickly, I wrote ha ha on it. You know, I was kind of joking around to be honest. It wasn't a bad post or anything like that, but, uh, hit boy such a coward. Uh, he couldn't call me or he couldn't message me. Right. Um, and so he had to go behind me. Uh, Dave Hirschbein can't stand the guy either. So he couldn't call, he wouldn't call him. Uh, so he calls Jim West and he, he, he threatens to kick my ass at the next show he sees me at. Uh, I had to watch my back and he was going to, you know, do all this crazy stuff to me. I mean, you know, the guy eats cheeseburgers for breakfast, you know, he's 300 pounds. I mean, I, I don't really care. I'm not scared of him, but I mean, he's just a loser. So, uh, <laughs> So then I, f I found this awesome picture uh, on Facebook, right? This was after. So now now his Fight Gear page is completely off my Facebook. My Facebook's private. Art of War is not on there. Hit Boy or nobody's on there. And so uh, so then I find this picture that <laughs> it had to be the funniest thing I've ever seen. I was, I was sitting laughing at it for 30 minutes before I put it on my Facebook. Uh, it was that fag life, a conversation with Hit Boy. And so, so I put this on my Facebook. And immediately shit hit the fan, which I knew it would. But uh, <clears throat> so he starts calling everyone. Um, you know, he gets mad and, and, you know, he hid behind the fact that supposedly his daughter somehow uh, gets on my Facebook. He's my Facebook, which is even creepy as it stands. But I don't know. So somehow his daughter saw that page, right, that I called her dad a homo. But um, and so he, he hides behind that. So next thing I know, I'm getting a call from uh, <clears throat> a couple people uh, on my friends list, whatever. And then I get a I get a screenshot of a message this loser puts up. So back to the fact that he's a coward. He doesn't have his own Facebook page, so he hides he hides behind that Art of War page. Right. But half the people don't know it's Hit Boy posting as Art of War. They think it might be Tom or Tom's wife or or someone like that. But but no, Hit Boy hides behind that. So Hit Boy goes and posts this big, long, stupid rant about <laughs> about if anybody's friends with me on Facebook, they have to delete me and everything else, right? So I predicted, which I was right, that people wouldn't delete me and they would just get deleted from Art of War because nobody gave a crap about Hit Boy. Well, that's what happened. And then I was reading a couple things. Uh, 
where Hit Boy's just a bully. I don't know what he pays these guys, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks to wear that shit fight gear. But then he also had a couple guys on contract that, uh, you know, he was bullying around saying if they didn't delete me, they'd never fight for Art of War again, right? Well, half those guys still didn't delete me. So Hit Boy got even more mad. And then I found another picture, which was apparently Hit Boy half naked, uh, you know, take, no, oh, shit, I'm getting fuzzy here. Okay. Um, Hit Boy um, <clears throat> half naked posing for a gay magazine or something like that. So I put that, <laughs> I was surprised I found that. Believe me, you should have seen my face. I put that as my Facebook profile picture. And that, and that is when, and that's when the greatness started to happen. So I get a call from Brandon. Hit Boy is, is such a loser. He's calling up there begging to get me off this card. <laughs> uh, Brandon said no. So then this morning I wake up. I get a call from Gary Shirley. Uh, Hit Boy Hit Boy's calling him, begging him to try to get me off this card. Uh, you know, it's just so funny. And then I went over on their page for a second. I can't comment, obviously, but they had such a dick suck fest over there. I was embarrassed to read it between Charlie Houston, Hit Boy, uh, this loser, Stephen Cartwright, who is absolutely terrible. You probably don't even know who he is, but he's like about 1 in 15. Apparently, he wants to fight me after Charlie Houston. But, I mean, it, it's a whole convoluted thing, but it, the, basically the gist of it is every once in a while, Hit Boy will say something, or, but he's, he'll never say it to you. But it always gets back because nobody likes Hit Boy except for a couple people, and he scammed his way into this Art of War thing, which my prediction is he's going to be gone from there in six months to a year and already would be. If uh, Tom wasn't such a busy guy, you know, I mean, that's basically what what it is, is, you know, Tom's too busy to, you know, to take everything on by himself. Nobody could stand Hit Boy. <clears throat> Nobody from our team was even fighting down there anyways, because uh, no one likes Hit Boy. I mean, I mean, that's what it is. He started up here. Uh, he was gone from up here. Right. He, I, I'm pretty sure I saw a post that he was supposed to be the matchmaker for West Coast. I mean, right. shit, he got fired so fucking quick from West Coast. Right. I, my head was spinning, dude. That, that was, I mean, if he's got talent, his talent is getting fired so goddamn quick. I mean, that was in 30 seconds. I saw right. a post. Uh, Hit Boy is no longer the matchmaker. I, was, I started cracking up. But, I mean, uh, it, Hit Boy needs some drama in his life. So, if he needs it, I mean, I'll put it up there. But now I got to watch out because they keep reporting me on Facebook. So, they're trying to ban my Facebook, too, you know. But, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, basically, I mean, yeah. well, yeah, what I, what I got out of it is um, <clears throat> basically what I thought. Nobody likes Hit Boy. Nobody really respects Hit Boy. Um, I went out on a limb. I posted, so, you know, if somebody posted those pictures about me, who fucking cares? You know, I'd probably laugh about it, dude. But Hit Boy is so insecure and so, you know, he has no self confidence. That, that's why him and Charlie get along, because they're so insecure. They have no self confidence, no friends that uh that anything you do gets under his skin so bad and then when he calls he thinks he that like, you know he thinks he has a little bit of power but then when he calls people and begs them to get me off the card and they say no and then they go back and he goes back and tries to talk to Tom i mean the only the only thing that i can honestly say is i'll apologize to to, to Tom because it's uh kind of art of war is, is his deal and right. he started it and, you know, Art of War kind of got dragged into it. I've never had a bad thing to say about Tom, Art of War. It's just Hit Boy. I mean, Hit Boy is like a cancer of the MMA community, regardless of what he wants to say. Right. Um, everywhere he goes, he's gone in under a year. And then after that, I mean, <clears throat> the promotions almost fall apart, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would concur with everything that you had to say. I got nothing bad to say about Professor Tom or Art of War. But Hit Boy always tries to attach them as like we're attacking uh, yeah. Professor Tom or Oakdale MMA or any of that. He always tries to, uh, like you said, just attaches himself like a fucking cancer. And yeah. uh, you know, I'm pretty much done with it too. He's told so many people how he's going to kick my ass, this, that, and the other thing. Well, I'm not hard to find. I'm no. at all the fucking shows. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just pathetic. But he found, you know. He found a good group to get in with that nobody's willing to badmouth and doesn't have anything bad to say. So, like you said, he's going to sit there and hide behind their Facebook page until right. they realize that this guy is an idiot. He's deleting people. He's canceling guys' contracts because they want to be friends with a guy on Facebook. I mean, you right. know, what, what are we, 15 years old, you know? Well, that's why they call him Hit Boy. It's not Hit Man because we have childish behavior that we, uh, that we engage in constantly. But... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, the photo the photo that you have is your Facebook uh, primary photo. Uh, fucking awesome. About peed my fucking <laughs> pants. Uh, uh, what are you thinking about and whatnot? I was just, I was fucking dying, dude. Oh, dude, I, dude, I was I was I literally was laughing. Every time I pulled that up, every time I got a me- like somebody would message me about something that had nothing to do with it. I had to go click on my profile picture just to see it again. It was it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean it, it's just funny. And then you know, Hit Boy exposed his real self. I don't care. People know that I like to fuck around. Right. And and, and the thing is, is uh, <clears throat> I've had a couple little tiny feuds or whatever like that. So Hit Boy clings on this that I'm extremely disrespectful. But I mean, here's the thing, dude. I've never had a problem with anybody. That, um, you know, I don't know, that people actually respect or anything like that, to be honest. Um, so it's mainly just Hit Boy, Charlie Houston, and, a, you know, a couple other losers. Um, and, and just like, you know, Pro- Professor Tom got on there and said, you know, I met him, you know, days ago when him and uh, Smith Lee and his brothers came up and trained one time. And, you know, he said I was respectful and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, that I mean, that's what it is. But nobody just wants to go out of their way and call hit boy a loser just because it's going to cause grief for them, but I don't care. So right. I'll, I'll make it known that hit boy's a loser. And then more people will know that hit boy's a loser and I'll feel good about it. Yeah. I stand behind that a hundred percent as well. Uh, the one thing about you and uh, me for that matter is if we got something to say, we put our fucking names on it. We don't have to hide behind some fucking go. persona and whatnot. Like, I don't give a fuck who, who gets mad about it. All I want to know is what the fuck are you going to do about it. So, Hit Boy, yeah. if you're watching this video, and I know he you're a be. fucking closet yeah. stalker, uh, He's fuck watching you. It. I don't care. Michael Christensen doesn't give a fuck. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can't do anything, okay? You can't even do a fucking push-up, okay? You should do some <laughs> fucking push-outs. Mix in a salad, you fucking butter tit motherfucker. I'm there fucking done with it, dude. I don't give a fuck yeah. who he's telling, delete this, delete that. He fucking oh. does this shit all the time. Oh, it's pathetic, dude. And then, yeah, he's de- he's demanding people delete. Oh, yeah. man. It, it's path- it, That's what it boils down to. I mean, this guy's pathetic, dude. I mean, <laughs> let, let, let's say it how it is. Uh, the guy's a moron. Yeah, absolutely, 100% agree with that. Okay, so... You got your fight coming up. Uh, keep me in the loop. Anything else that's going on uh, that we should know about? Um, I don't, dude. I don't think so. Um, just you know, just uh, the fight here. I think it's November sixteenth, Charlie Houston. Um, regardless, I will be fighting on that card. <clears throat> um, Charlie Houston. I mean, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a good fight. The thing is, is uh, Charlie Houston's a confident guy somehow in his abilities. I don't know. Mike Rumsey's a who he used to train over with. Carnage, he might still. Mike Rumsey's great at getting these guys' confidence up. He sets them up. I love, love Mike Rumsey. But he set Charlie uh, Houston up with about 15 cans over there at a Gladiator Challenge show. And so Charlie Houston thinks he's God's great, uh, God's gift uh, to fighting. But so he's got some confidence. The fight's going to be a good fight. Uh, the weigh-ins will be fun. I know that. Media day is going to be fun. And then after this, I'm going to cut to 35. So hopefully get a good fight at GKO and uh, go from there. All right, fantastic. Well, Mike, I always enjoy talking to you. Uh, we'll definitely be in touch, you know, to hear about how uh, Media Day went, et cetera, and so forth. And I'll definitely be cage side to see this epic tilt on uh, in November. So uh, anybody you want to shout out before I let you go today, my man? Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, MMA Gold Dave, Hirschfine, Jim West. Um, you know, I just moved back up here probably, you know, a month and a half ago. These guys got me right back in, everything like that. Uh, standalone fight team up in Chico. Um, you know, I trained there a couple times and for the last couple of weeks, uh, heading up to this fight, I'm going to be going up there at least two days a week, maybe three, uh, to mix in, uh, some cross training. They got, you know, Benito Lopez. They got a ton of good guys up there. Um, BAM fight gear and, uh, Jeremy Bonita who helped me out with my nutrition for a while. Um, and that's it really. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great fight. All those guys have helped support me. Um, I don't know. Just look at the places I'm training. <clears throat> uh, Charlie Houston is training down with Gary Shirley. So that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> Epic. All right, my man. We wish you the best of luck. Like I said, I will see you cage side in November. Thanks again for your time. Thanks, man. Later. All right. Later.